Hi everyone. Many students wonder how to learn to do proofs in maths. Now obviously proving a simple property isn't the same as proving Fermat's last theorem. But it's clear that one way to start is with simple properties. So in this video we'll prove a very simple property showing the steps involved in the process. Let's discover the maths. We'll show that for any pair of real numbers, x and y, which are greater than or equal to zero, their arithmetic mean is greater than their geometric mean. That is, x plus y divided by 2 is greater than or equal to the square root of x times y. First, we'll work with the expression to be proved for as long as it takes for a strategy to emerge. In our case, for example, we can move the 2 from the left side to the right by multiplying. Since it's a positive number, it doesn't change the sense of the inequality. And we get that x plus y is greater than or equal to 2 times the square root of x times y. Now we can move the element from the right side to the left by subtracting to give x plus y minus 2 times the square root of x times y is greater than or equal to 0. What next? We spend some time looking and thinking. We have 2 times the square root of x times y, that is twice something, and in front we have two addends. We could think of the square of a sum or a subtraction or complete the squares. Let's try it. First, the square root of a product is the product of the square roots. And x and y must be greater than or equal to 0 to be able to take their square roots. Then we obtain that x plus y minus 2 root x root y is greater than or equal to 0. Now we have twice the product of the square roots of x and y. We're going to express the x and y in front as squares. Clearly it's the squares of their square roots. So we have that root x squared plus root y squared minus 2 times root x root y is greater than or equal to 0. Notice this is the square of a subtraction. We have the square of the first, the square of the second, and twice the first times the second. This is root x minus root y squared, which is greater than or equal to zero because, as you know, the square of any real number is always greater than or equal to zero. So, with all of the above, which we can consider to be a draft, we've glimpsed the proof of our result. Now it's time to write it in the most elegant way possible, for the benefit of whoever reads it. And we can do this by going the opposite way to what we've just done. Since both x and y are greater than or equal to zero, we can take their square roots and then we have that root x minus root y squared is greater than or equal to zero because it's the square of a real number. Then developing the square on the left side, we have that this is the square of the first plus the square of second minus twice the first times the second. And this is greater than or equal to zero. The square of root x is x plus the square of root y is y minus 2 times, and we write root x times root y as root x times y. And this is greater than or equal to 0. Then we move this last element to the right and obtain that x plus y is greater than or equal to 2 times the square root of x times y. Moving the 2 to the other side, we arrive at x plus y divided by 2 is greater than or equal to the square root of x times y. 
and then comes the best bit because we can then say and this is what we wanted to prove. Now we can erase everything that we'd previously written and present this as the proof of our result and it looks great. Now here's an important point. Someone looking at our proof might think well, that's a clever idea. I'd never have thought of considering the square of root x minus root y. Proofs often seem beautiful and elegant when presented in their final form, but usually a great deal of work goes into them, including exploring lots of ideas. Many of these ideas may end up being discarded, but all make some contribution to showing the way to the final proof. Well, it's great that you've made it this far, and here are a couple of other suggestions for videos you might like. On the left is a video where we show why negative times negative is positive, and on the right is one in which we reveal the mathematics behind cryptocurrencies. Thanks very much for watching, and we'll see you again soon to discover more maths.